hours for that for uh, yeah before eight eight or more hours just for once. Mm -hmm. And so far, how many auditors would be coming? Uh, we're expecting it to be a full house mm -hmm. uh, since the Dolby Tech will have 260 capacity. Okay. So more around 240. Okay, next question from Mr. Nikita I just want to know how important is truth in the Chabak um, technique of acting? How important it's is super truth? important, but it's not that you can't make it the only thing that's important. It has to be <coughs> truthful to the point of desperate, that creating Truth to the point of desperate need that requires you to do something about it. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So I, I, create, I want the truth to be so devastatingly important to overcome whatever that you know, truth is that you're forced to be proactive as opposed to a victim in whatever the circumstances of the script are. So the truth being so hyper stakes so hyper important that it, be, it, it creates um, surprising behavior in the actor that becomes really cool and, you know, like uh, mannered in a, in a way that's uh, surprising, like life is. Uh, my follow up to that, um, how would you guide an actor or an actress who has remained in the flow set as far as their personal sexual orientation is concerned? How can you guide them as an acting coach and master teacher uh, in presenting the truth to their characters? Let's say they are so in love with the opposite sex, but in reality they are so closeted. How do you guide them to 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 act without the audience noticing that they are just acting? Um, you haven't read the book, right? Okay, yeah. There's a, there's a chapter on how to do that. <laughs> It's called substitution, but it's like there's a whole chapter on how to do that. So it's like there's a process of making that work and being and creating a truthfulness. But it's a chapter that's like 30 pages, so I can't really, I can't, there's not a one-liner for that. We just know that there is a solution for that, a necessary solution, because a lot of things that you're going to have to be truthful about aren't your truths. How you duplicate them as your truths is a process. And it's, a, and it's a, uh, as part of the skill set that I'm going to be teaching people. And how important is a script to an actor? Because the reason why I'm asking that is because some of the independent filmmakers today are practicing what they call improvisation, and they they do not have a working script on the set. So it also how many people are doing that now? Oh, so you still have to have the truth of your objective, what you want, the, the truth of like the base of whatever the improv is based on, you know, because they'll give you enough information so you know their backstory, uh, their, 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 their love story, what their needs are, what their insecurities are, what their um, neuroses are. They'll give you that. And then you have to just put, you have to put substance to it, but personalizations, um, creating need, um, that's the character's need that's based in your own personal need, and and letting the words fly out of your face that would be yours, your words. But um, improvisation, is, so you use the same technique. Um, it doesn't change that. Script is, I, I happen to believe in script because there's someone who sat there and wrote it and rewrote it, rewrote it so that there was a definition, beginning, middle, and end, and a defined like arc. The problem with the improvisation to me is that Actors sometimes will go off and be self-indulgent and make it all about them and not about the story being told. But um, still, I've, there's been most most comedy films that come out of the states are like I'd say 50 percent improvisation. But there are comedy people who know how to improv, and that and they're coming from the, the characters that they are uh, renowned for playing and who they are as people. So it's just like it's an easy transition to go from script to improv, improv script back and forth. Um, but uh, but it's just you just use, you use the same technique. I just, to me, just as someone who works with writers and directors, I just think it's good to go with something that someone's given it more thought than just their own character. My last question is, you seem to be a very 
calm person and serene person, have you ever walked out or given, <laughs> or given up on an actor when, have you ever walked out on an actor or given up on an actor? I don't, and I'm, 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 I'm a very patient person, um, because I believe that you are trying your best. The only time I lose patience is when people aren't putting out their best foot. If they're not trying, then why, I, this is what I say to them, if you're not going to try, why should I put all the effort in? You know, so if you put a lot of effort into it and you're still not hitting it, we'll have a conversation about it and I'll keep working you and putting, doing, giving you exercise and doing different things that help you break through that. Um, but I have a great, great patience. And why? I don't have very much patience at home. My husband will tell you that. <laughs> I was a lot out of control, and he'll tell you that as well my, my child. But but I, I love what I do. I love teaching acting, because I think it's more than teaching acting. I think it's teaching empowerment of your capacity as a human being and as an artist. And that, it, that feeds me the patience to, to continue to get through whatever gets thrown at me. So, that's the calm and serene, because we're talking about acting, we're talking about what I love, that I love doing this. Um, but, I, but in terms of my regular life kind of thing, I'm, I'm really got the actor's soul inside of me. I lose control real fast at home. <laughs> we'll get to Skype my husband. <laughs> and I go, uh huh, <laughs> she does. <laughs> I think I yelled at him the other day, like, so hard that I had lost my voice. I mean, you know, it's not good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Next question from Ms. Maridua. Uh, Ms. Ivana, you were saying that your job is very educational and you learn a lot of it. What did you learn from Filipino actors and the Philippines, Filipinos as a, in general? Okay, well, you, you, you keep trying to delineate, and I'm saying we're all part of one big human family. I can't say that this is something specific I learned from the Philippine actors because I don't see them as different than being from any other part of the world. To me, I take the boundaries out. There are no boundaries. I don't put boundaries in my world. The only boundary is language. That's it. And you know what? I'm really good through translation. You know, so it's like I... I learned how to like bond with whoever's translating with me so they're picking up not a pure translation they're picking up on my heart translation so I'm really still like communicating with these actors even if it's a even if there's a language barrier so I've learned how to I not even put that as a barrier so I don't want to say that this is what they taught me because then I'd be delineating and doing exactly what I say I don't do I take boundaries out of the equation in all things. If someone tells you this is how you're supposed to um, do something, I say, how do we don't do it that way? <laughs> how do we cross the line? How do we, how do we, uh, rules are meant to be broken um, in the arts. Um, boundaries are meant to be, not like when you were a little kid, they told you always color within the lines. How much better is your art if you go and don't color within the lines, you know? So that's your job is to be courageous enough to say, you know what, I don't care what people think. I'm going to do what I need to do. And oftentimes, coloring within the lines is going to keep you contained and imprisoned by your own, by other people's rules, not your own. But nobody likes prison. Prison's never good for anything in any form. Whether it's metaphoric prison or whether it's real prison, it's never good. So why imprison yourself by keeping yourself in boundaries? So I don't want to delineate the, 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 the Filipino actors from other people. They're joy to me. They're joy. I learned. I'm gonna learn. I can't wait to figure out what I'm gonna learn tomorrow and the next day because there's gonna be definite things I'm gonna learn. Okay. Thank you for that. Next question from the Hi, Ms. Ivana. Um, who, who do you think among the Filipino actors that you work with uh, have the potential or even small potential to be in Hollywood? I think they all have the potential.
potential of being in Hollywood. It's up to <laughs> the guts to go and do it. It takes courage. The big pond. You know? But there's people like, if you just have to have the courage to do it, you know that you're going to have to live small for a while. Um, just a follow up. You, you said a while ago that you're taking out the boundaries uh, when, when you're facing with uh, any actors from any part of the globe. No, I, but, I, I, I try to take boundaries away from yeah, yeah. all aspects of life. Yeah, no no boundaries. Boundaries. yeah but uh, uh, of course, the, the nuances of the Filipino actors and uh, the foreign actors are different. How, how do you deal with that? The nuances. Nuances. Oh, yeah, the, the um, but, but everybody has different nuances. Even from the same country, they have different nuances. There's no, we, you guys aren't all doing the same thing. It's like every time you like say hello, you go, who's this? You know, so it's like everybody has their own versions of everything. So it's not, it's not nuanced by culture, it's nuanced by who you are, who your parents were, who their parents were, just brothers, the schools you grew up in. Um, your friends, that's where your real nuances and mannerisms come from. Um, it doesn't come from a, a being a part of the country. Because when, when, uh, especially when I watch uh, Chinese movies, uh, they, they attack a role differently from, yeah, that, like, they, they need like me. a drama they scene. They need me there. <laughs> 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 we were two to those, those, uh, those, those movies. Um, it's a, they, uh, yeah, it's a different way of working because I, I, my book is being translated into Chinese as we speak, um, and they want to bring me out there, so I'm hoping to change all that. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we have a question here from Ms. Jinshu from the head of Hi, Ivana, welcome yes. back to the yes. Philippines. Yes. Uh, maybe an offshoot of, um, of the question that you just received, but... Um, I was curious, at what point do you, uh, are you pressured by, or uh, do you consider the, the reaction of the audience when, uh, when defining, I guess, the success of your actors after they take your technique, or, I mean, I guess you're, you're talking about being, you know, the truthfulness and, and, and having that, the but at the same time, respond. it's still... You have to make it relatable, you have to make your audience respond, you're not making your audience respond in a way that it's is like giving them some ability to to like learn something or, or, or come with that information. You didn't do your job right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, your audience reaction is really important. Not critical response. Who cares? Don't worry about that because they have different set of rules. But your audience, your regular audience, has to be. If you're not bringing in something that is the basic human equation, that's why I present it, it's not delineated by country, but it's delineated by humanity, then you're relatable to anybody in the world. Like you, you, you would be able to laugh and cry in the right places and not know somebody's language. Mm -hmm. Because they're, where they're acting from is um, from a basic human need and a basic human truth. And, and so when your audience isn't getting it, you're not doing it right. The audience is important because you're not doing it. If you're self-indulgent, you're doing it for yourself. It's the same concept as being around somebody who, who um, is always sad and, and, and whining all the time. Those people that like, oh, my, uh, my life is horrible. Uh, I can't get a job. My boyfriend just left me. Or, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. Those people that sit there and... and, and Line all the time, it's truthful and it's honest, right? They're honestly feeling pain about all this stuff. But you don't want to be around that because it's so self indulgent. They're not trying to change, they're fine with living in it. So they sit there and sit in their misery. Now, we don't like being around those people, right? They're it's annoying. So if we don't like being around them for free. Why would we pay to see them? Why would we hire them? Yeah. You want to be around those people for free. So, so yes, your audience is very important because we're doing it for them. We're not doing it for yourself. If you are doing it for yourself, then you're one of those people. I guess at what point would you uh, sell out to please the audience in, in, in a film, in, um, not, in, in a You don't series. know what the audience is going to think or not think. You can't, there's no way to sell out because you don't have the information to sell out. You don't know what they want. And that's what, but all you can do is be um, honest.
honest to the human equation, want it really bad, so we're watching someone be an emotional hero, and your audience will be affected. Um, but if you try to second guess anybody or anything, you will be wrong. You can't second guess. Because, you know, whatever you think the other person wants, like going after this guy. You try to second guess what he wants, what he wants from somebody, a woman, and you, you're gonna guess wrong. Okay, I actually have a funny story about that. It's a perfect, it's a long one, but I remember like that back in the day before I was married, I was, uh, went out with this guy, and I thought all guys want girls that don't want to have a relationship. They don't want a commitment. So the boyfriend before that didn't want a commitment. So I said to this guy like my third fourth date in, he said, "What do you think about like you know?" And I said, oh, no, I'm free as a bird. I'm, I'm just like one of those free spirit. I don't want a commitment. And thinking that's what he wanted to hear. I second guessing. No, 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 no. Of course, he wanted a relationship. He dumped me and got married a month later to somebody else. Oh. And he wanted a relationship. <laughs> so I was trying to please him. And that, in that uh, dinner that we were having, we were out, outside dinner. It's a bird uh, shit on my head, too. It, it's like, it's just, it's like, even the birds are making comments. But I can't please people. Have it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yeah. All right, we have a question from Mars. So you're, ha you're a happy camper. I'm just curious, Ms. Ivana, if uh, your comedic actor clients are easier to mentor or teach as with your dramatic actors, you know, the likes of Jim Carrey. David Wyans and Rob Schneider, these are the three white people. And are they also seriously taking you know, your I think it's just I always tell people it's like there's no difference between comedy and drama. And so it's like just because it's, it's, it's just the more you want something really badly from a really truthful place, a desperate place, you do funny stuff in spite of yourself. And and so it's uh, I, I never break it down differently. Is it harder for people who aren't naturally funny? I think there are some people who shouldn't do comedy, and uh, and I think there's some comedians that should never comic actors that shouldn't do drama. But then there are people like Jim Carrey who can do it all, you know. So it's and and, and coming from a place of hyper truth because he's had one sucky childhood. I mean, Horrible childhood, mm -hmm. and like with, from abandonment to being fun of to living on like homeless with his father. I mean, just like they, you, using it created the comedy and the drama of all his performances, the three dimensionality of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're done to our last two questions. Go all right. Uh, I think we're done, but we have last two questions. <laughs> <laughs> One last two, please. We have Albert here. <laughs> Hello, Ivana. Welcome to the Philippines. Um, why did you develop such technique? Was it a, because you saw something that's unnatural in a movie that you think you could develop? How did I develop something? this technique? It was survival. It was just first the thought process of how to get through my own childhood stuff because I was self destructing a lot um, with a lot of the things I was doing. And I said, like, I got to take the same painful information and do something else with it. And it just made sense because I was an actor first. I started putting it in my work. I started, uh, like, actors always help each other out when they're working. That's just what we do. Um, and so I would give them notes that would have been applied the way I was looking at a script. And then people started paying me money to break it down. And I just started going, like, I don't like this teaching stuff better than acting, like, by a lot. I used to be on set acting, and the time would go so slow. And then I'd be teaching, and it goes so fast, and I realized I really like this a lot better. I like the, being the nurturing force behind the camera or in stage than I do like being a person on stage. You know, so so it just it just it really honestly came from survive personal survival. Um, will a good movie lead to an acting commendation, or acting alone should be enough? For you to get a, an acting nomination, because sometimes I thought I'm, I think an acting is only recognized, an actor's acting is only recognized when it's a good movie. Yes, and, and sometimes that is the case because it's just not seen because it's, you aren't seeing that movie. But it, it happens.
happened with, uh, with, with, maybe it wasn't a movie. It happens all the time, but it doesn't happen as often as it should. But the, one of the stories about Judith Leiter and Tony is the first Tony she won, everybody was nominated. She was the only one that won, but the play was not, everything was nominated. The second play that she won, um, it was critically panned. It, uh, people hated it. Critics hated it. It only lasted, I think, for a couple of weeks. It was not on the boards for very long. Nobody else got nominated or even perceived as being good enough. She got glowing reviews, but so they said, but basically, the whole, this is a sucky play, and she won the tone. So it happens. It's just harder because less people are going to see it. But I call it being how good a performance must be that you're not even in the loop. You're not even in the loop because your movie's not even considered good, but you got um, a, a nomination. Like Ryan Gosling um, got a nomination for Half Nelson in the movie. Nobody saw that movie. Mm -hmm. He got a nomination, $50,000 movie. But it just, we, we took chances, we went for it, um, and uh, he, was, he, he was recognized. And last is, um, what's your criteria for a delivery. Um, if you're going to critic, what are the things that you're looking for to say that it's a good acting or it's the best acting at that time? It's a It's like saying, what's the best meal? Okay, there's a lot of food I like to eat. And so it's like, it's like that was my criteria for say the best stew was my criteria for the best best uh, rose, best criteria for a cake, you know, the best cake. It's like there's just so many elements, it's the arts. Right or wrong, so there's like this is this is going to be the, what makes a good performance. That's magic pill. But this is some of the choices that you could make. Al Pacino once said it really perfectly. Um, someone had asked him in an interview, he said, "What do you think of being an uh, acting icon?" And he said, "Well, I don't know anything much about that. But I just I, what I do is I look at a part, I make a lot of choices, and I hope it works." One last question, yes. promise, <laughs> from Chan. Hi, Ivania, welcome to Manila. Uh, my question was already answered <laughs> because this is the last question. I'm just curious, uh, what are your other uh, passion in life aside from teaching? That's what I do all the time, like all day long, all night long, and all weekend long. I guess the other passion I have is I'm in the midst of uh, writing my memoirs. Um, so I, I mean them to be very tragic and very funny. So I've had some people, like, I've, I've read them, and they say, it makes you laugh out loud, and it makes you cry. So that's what I, I, that's what I'm kind of working on, and that's my secondary passion, is writing things that are like taking some of the tragedies of my life and finding the comedy in it. I think, I think humor is super important. I try to put humor in every part. I don't care how dramatic it is. I help people get Emmys on, on, on daytime soap operas, which are considered just hyper drama. I would find the comedy in it, and that's what makes people respond. People want to, and you want to laugh. And two, you can't know how dark it is unless there you see some light. <laughs> you know, so it's like, I just think humor is super important, and uh, that's that's my kind of secondary passion is uh, uh, is, is writing this this book because I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Uh, okay, and then uh, how do you upgrade your master classes? Do I update them? Upgrade. Oh, upgrade. Yeah, because it's a series of master classes, right? Well, I mean, in my in LA class. Yeah. Okay, so it's not a series of nice. It's an introductory class, then that's an advanced class, and then you get chosen to move into the master class if you're ready. Um, so when you're ready and you understand the technique, you get moved into my class. Uh, how is it judged by your skills? 
It's not judged by time. Mm -hmm. It's judged by skills. So if you if you seem to get it in two weeks, you'll be in my class. And it's happened many a time. It also happened with people who never got there because they just their skills weren't good enough. But uh, but it's like anything to get to a master level. You have to prove yourself. Okay, uh, Direct Ryan, I'd just like to know, can anybody just buy tickets and just join the event tomorrow and on Sunday? Yeah, uh, uh, we post it over social media and over the network. Yeah, and the only, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a requirement that there's no media, there's no press, and of course, um, of course, my hands are tied for for the GMA actors, of course, uh, for the for the competitive network, of course, that they can allow them to to be there. Well, the reason why we don't allow press is because this is a time when we're all revealing secrets. I want they need to feel safe, and this is all over the world. It's like I. I'll, I'll sometimes do like a seminar or something and anybody can come and I'll teach an emotional diary and things like that. Things that they can learn that would be fun for anybody to learn. But once we start opening up the door to your secret place, I want you to feel safe. I want them to get it's a very safe environment to be able to be open and, and I want to feel safe in being open, you know? And I want all of us like as one big family of like knowing that we have this like bubble that we've created. And I've done this with some pretty big groups. It's like the last Italian group had almost 300 people there, and it was a, it was a bubble. There's major stars that were in that group uh, that were participants. And nobody's ever spoken a word to the press about that because it becomes our secret, private place. So, so if you're if you're oppressed, it's you're beholden to tell them what you've heard, and so it's not fair to them, and not fair to the process that I've created. Okay, thank you very much for that clarification. Because <laughs> I'm planning to buy a ticket and observe tomorrow. <laughs> no, I, I just can't unless you, unless you came in without, like, without feeling anything. Even if we sign a waiver? I don't know if we can, we can sign a piece of paper or something so we can't you know, disclose anything. And I think that is part of the reason why you want to come, no? You want to hear this stuff? So-and-so stars, I blah, blah, blah. There's blah, always blah. a waiver. Huh? Waiver. Waiver. What if they sign a waiver? Sign a waiver. I mean, it's up to you, but the point is that they have, they have to sign something so that, because I want people to feel safe in that. And I also, no audio, no nothing can happen. I would allow you to sign a waiver. Because you'll, you'll have a lot of fun, because it's really, you'll open up a lot of your stuff, too. Mm -hmm. Because I have people do exercises that they come to understand what your stuff is. Mm -hmm. But it's like, um, and, uh, it's, 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 it's kind of a fun experience to like to be open and know that you're being creative with it. But it's, uh, you've got to sign a waiver, some version of such, and I don't have that. Or if you can create that or something. Okay. So, therefore, all participants could not... Uh, bring their phones or cameras. They're not allowed to, They're not They're not allowed to bring any uh, any gadgets. They can't use during the yeah, yeah, If we see someone doing that, they'll be kicked out. Oh. Okay. <laughs> their phone, we'll, we'll take their phone and delete it. You know, so it's okay. like, or whatever device they bring in. But they, and we have certain people that are going to be allowed. They're part of um, you know, this organization. and be allowed to take, take pictures. Um, but no videos. So we only be photographs. And, um, and, and that's it. And that, because we can control that. But yeah, if that happens, you will be gone or will be deleted. And you will be sad. No money back. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, pretty cool about being nice about something. It's just about being a nice person. You know, and I think it's like, I don't mind. Like, I want to feel the best about people, the people I want to do that. But so far, I've been doing these workshops around the world and very famous people who are in there, and nobody's yet. I don't want you guys to be the first. <laughs> I have to say there is a delineation of boundaries. And then it's going to go, you know, it's talk too much. <laughs> I, I doubt, I, I think that this is, this is such a, everybody I've met at 